did you just say to me? Excuse me? You want what now? I don't think so. No, absolutely not. Oh, for f Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name's George, and today I'm gonna show you how to make the broom for your Harry Potter crochet kits. Some of you will be familiar with my other Harry Potter Hedwig and Harry Potter knitting videos which I will link in the description box below and I would suggest that if you are making the Harry Potter project from the beginning take a look at at least the first video because there's a lot of useful information in there which I'm not going to cover this time because I've already covered it in the previous videos. So those of you that have seen those videos will know that I hate these projects with a passion. I do not make a secret of it. I do not enjoy doing these projects. So why am I making another video after I said that the last one was the last ever one? Well, that's all thanks to Aldi. Thank you. Thank you so much. So in their infinite wisdom, Aldi have decided to not only re-release these kits, but also to add an additional pattern piece into the project. So as you can see, this is my original pattern. Harry does not have a broom anywhere in this picture. There is no instructions here. I've got head, eyes, hair, eyebrows, fringe, scar, ears, body, lapels, arms, sleeves, legs, scarf, badge and wand. No broom. The original Harry is not playing Quidditch right now. So when people got to the new broom part of the pattern, a few people got stuck and have asked me to make a little video to help with that. So Amy, Amar, Betty and everybody else that has either messaged me on Facebook, Instagram, written me comments on YouTube, this video is for you guys. I will also be showing you a little cheat for making the wand as well because it is very fiddly and honestly if I was doing this I would probably just give up. So before we get started, the broom, I know it looks kind of weird, um, I did have to look up a picture on Google of what it's supposed to look like and apart from the fact that mine is green, this is actually how it's supposed to look so you know, hey, we're not judging, we're just making brooms. Okay so we're going to do the broom first up, I've already made a start on this part of the broom, so starting from here, moving towards the tip. So if you haven't seen video number one, I suggest you go watch that now because in that video I will show you how to make your magic ring to get started with, how to put all the increases in and how to read the pattern. So based on the principles from video number one, which remember is linked below, you should be able to get this far. So, magic ring, increase in every stitch to get to 12, increase in every other stitch to get to 18. Carry on going up for 10 rows with 18 stitches. Then we start to make these, which according to the pattern, I believe are what they mean when they refer to twigs. So, how to do the twigs. So we have to double crochet five, so one, two, three, four, five. Now the pattern's going to tell you to turn your work and start doing your double crochets in here. It's going to get really fiddly and tricky and complicated if you do that. So what I have worked out to be the easiest way is to give yourself loads of room on where you're 
heck he's going through the loop. Keep your work facing the way it was when you started your five and put your hook through the first double crochet that you made and make sure that your hook passes over the yarn. Pull everything tight and then bring the yarn back through that stitch so you've got two loops on your hook and then close those two loops together so that's number one and then you've got to make five in total so that's number two that's number three that's number four number five we're going to be working in rounds so take your stitch marker and put it through the fifth stitch that you've just made okay so we're going to need to do two more rounds so I like to use my scrap paper to help me keep track of how many rounds I've done. So we'll do them now. So we'll find our first stitch in our round of five. One. And this time you don't need to do anything fiddly with joining it into the round because it's already round. That's the first of our two remaining rounds done. And I can move my stitch marker. And do my second round of five. There's one. take the stitch marker out. Five, much easier. So that's our second one done. Now what we need to do is decreases. This should be a laugh because look how small that is as if you think I can make it any smaller. So we're gonna do hook in, pull the arm back, next stitch, hook in, and pull the arm back, close all the loops, and then we're going to have a normal stitch, and then we are going to do another decrease, so hook in, pull back, final stitch but not through the ones you just made and pull back close the two loops so now I should be able to tie this off and break my yarn I'm going to take the stitch marker out and if you want to at this point you can use your crochet hook to pull that tail inside your work. 
So we know that we started at number one, we did five, and then we went back around. So we're gonna be one, two, three, Four, five is gonna make us at stitch number 10. So I always just join in like this, tie myself a slip knot, put it on my hook. Just gonna put a stitch marker in number 10, hook through the relevant stitch, pull the yarn through, and you're ready to go. So now I have to do another five so one two three four five and again we're going to be making a twig so it's going to be in rounds of five again, nice and tiny, just the way I like it, not. So it tells you to turn, but again, I wouldn't bother with the turning because it's just going to make it complicated. Put your hook through the first stitch in that series of five that you made. Pull the yarn loop tight. Bring that yarn back through the first stitch and close those two loops. So rejoin the yarn in stitch six of round ten. So if you remember we did one, two, three, four, five, and then the twig, and then we counted up to number ten and the twig. So number six is gonna be this one here. Okay, so I'm just gonna get my yarn, do a slip knot. Go to my stitch, which was this one, put my hook in and join my yarn in. I need to do double crochet four. There's one, two, three, four. And then two in the bottom of my twig. So you can see where the sort of two sides join with each other. That's where you put your two double crochets. I'm going to do four. So one. another two double crochets into the bottom of the twig so that's just here one two so that's 12 in total I'm gonna put my stitch marker in number 12 after I've done that 
I'm going to do four rounds of one double crochet in each. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And then all you do is just stitch in the stitches you were in before. So there's one, two, three, four. So I'm going to carry on with my four rows and then I will meet up with you when we are ready to do the next bit. So now you're at the point where it wants you to stuff the bit of the broom. So you're going to need your toy stuffing from your kit. If you've got any tails poking out, just stuff them inside. So when you're happy you've got enough toy stuffing in there and you carry on crocheting. So let me just bring that back to the right size. So next round it just wants you to decrease. So there's one and two. Close the loops. One and two. Close. One. So keep going around. So final round, what they want you to do is decrease three more times. So we tie this off. And that is the end of the broom. So now we have to make the stick section. I'm not going to lie to you, this bit is going to be really, really fiddly. So essentially, you're going to start by making a magic ring. And remember, video number one of the Harry Potter series, if you want to know how to do the magic ring. So six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Stitch marker in the last one. Pull the tail tight. And now you have to do 26 rounds of one double crochet in each stitch. I didn't do 26 rounds. I just did it until I couldn't be bothered anymore. So. One, two,
So you're going to carry on doing that until it's as long as you want it to be. It's incredibly fiddly because it's so small. So the only advice I can give you is to keep using a stitch marker and try and make your stitches a little bit looser than you have been doing just because it makes them a little bit easier to see. Now that's the same advice I have for you about the wand because all you're doing is making a magic ring and then doing the same number of stitches in each round. So again, if you want to know how to do a magic ring, check video number one. If the wand is too fiddly for you, I'm going to show you a different way of doing it. So for starters, you're going to make a slip knot. Then I'm going to make a chain of however many stitches you want to make. So I've done seven. And then you're going to put double crochet in the second stitch from your hook and all the way along. So I have something that's starting to resemble a wand, but it's a little bit floppy and sloppy. If you want to give it a little bit more rigidity, you can do slip stitches all the way along the wand. So just put your hook in and pull the yarn through the stitch and through the loop on the hook. Okay, so hook through the stitch, pull through and through the loop on the hook. So as you can see this is the wand I made using the pattern in the kit and this is the alternative wand. They're both round about the same thickness. So if you find that the wand from the pattern is a bit too fiddly, try and do it in rows rather than in rounds. Okay guys, so once you have made your wand, your broomstick bristles and your broomstick handle, all you need to do is use your darning needle to weave in your ends and then sew the broomstick handle to the top of your broomstick bristles and you'll be all done and ready to go. I hope some of you found that video useful and if you did please remember to give me a like, subscribe to my channel and leave me some comments below and until next time I will see you again. Take care, bye bye.